The reinforcement function is generally provided by geogrids. They are placed in horizontal planes behind the wall and connected to the wall face. They simply tie the wall face into the supporting mass of backfill material. In this cross section you can see the geogrids connecting to the wall face. Gravel is placed around the geogrid to prevent the wall from simply pulling it out of the soil. The gravel is free draining which prevents direct rainfall from remaining in the system and building up pressure on the wall. Groundwater escapes the system via drainage at the back of the excavation. Geosynthetic sheet drains are often used for this purpose. The connection between the geogrids and the wall is central to the design. Several different connection methods are available. Each facing system has its own connection detail. The geogrid reinforcement selected is dependent on load requirements such as wall height, angle of setback, vehicle loads, base soil strength, etc. Here we have a segmental block wall where the facing system is a single layer of concrete masonry blocks. The geogrid connects to the front face of the wall. The strength grade and length of the geogrid tail are all important factors in the engineering design and wall stability. An important factor is the vertical spacing between horizontal planes of geogrid layers. Wall height, expected loads, such as from vehicles, are factors in determining the number of layers required and distance in between. Different wall facing systems have different connection details. Some geogrids allow casting into pre-cast concrete panels. Drainage is important for retaining walls as it is with many civil engineering constructions. Water buildup increases the loads on the wall and can be reduced by usage drainage. Various methods of drainage can be used, often in the same system, such as free draining backfill, sheet drains at the back of excavation, piping to allow runoff from within the wall system, and channels to control surface runoff. Retaining walls commonly use geosynthetic reinforcement and drainage solutions. There are well-established design methods including AS4678 or BS8006. Now let's take a look at the use of geosynthetics in drainage channels. Drainage channels include canals, irrigation channels, creeks and streams, and stormwater channels in road systems and mine sites. Uncontrolled movement of water can be very damaging to engineered structures. Channels are often used to control water movement, such as in road structures and around bridges, on mine sites, and around waterways in urban areas. Geosynthetics provide engineers with options to minimize the impact of erosion caused by water movement. Typical products used include geotextiles, gabions and erosion control blankets. Drainage channels can vary in size and flow capacity but they must all be designed for peak flow events such as a 1 in 50 year storm event. The rate of flow and expected volume will generally dictate the geosynthetic materials used. Here we see a low volume, slow moving waterway. A soft geosynthetic is used. In this case it is a biodegradable erosion control blanket that encourages vegetation growth. The root systems of the vegetation will bind into the soil and resist erosion. Here we see gabions used to protect abutments for a small bridge. 
A non-woven geotextile is always used behind gabions as a filter layer. The gabions will be more able to resist a high flow storm event than a soft erosion control blanket. Here is a drainage channel built for a mining site. A geotextile is placed underneath a geocell and small rock weirs are used to slow down the water flow. That is to dissipate energy by changing the hydraulic grade line. This solution can be considered somewhere in between a soft lining solution like an erosion control blanket and a hard engineered structure such as a concrete channel. Here is a gabion structure designed to protect a railway bridge. You can see the step design. This is another example of an engineering structure controlling the hydraulic grade line and slowing down the velocity and destructive power of flowing water. There is a wide range of structures from simple drainage channels using erosion blankets to engineered drop structures. Design of channel lining structures will call on the engineer's skill in hydraulics and hydrology. Geosynthetics can offer a more environmentally sensitive solution than traditional rock or concrete structures. The last category of engineered structures we will look at are used for beach protection. Coastlines have a number of functions such as for port facilities or recreation. They can be formed from many different types of material, from sandy beaches to rocky coastlines. Coastal structures have particularly demanding requirements that need to address. The erosive force of waves, complex coastal processes such as longshore drift or sand, the aggressive abrasive and corrosive effects of seawater in the intertidal zone. Geotextiles are commonly used under rock seawalls providing filtration and separation. Rock is the traditional material used in beach protection structures. Here we see a rock revetment being built on the foreshore. A thick non-woven geotextile is used underneath the rock as a filter medium. It allows the water to pass through without washing away all the sand beneath the rock. Without use of a geotextile, the rock protection structure must be carefully built using several different gradings of rock, the largest on the outside. This is expensive and difficult to ensure stability with rock being a very irregular shaped building material. With a geotextile, much less rock is required. The geotextile needs to be selected to withstand construction forces such as sharp edges as the rock is dropped into place. It also needs to withstand hydraulic forces from wave surges and resist sand abrasion over time. 